Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this and once again, this is this time of the year when everyone does their little game of the year and you know that we all like to get dressed up. Couldn't find my white shirt so I hope red and white stripes go with black but irregardless, we're here to talk about game of the year. Now I've tallied up all your votes and I'll be doing that video after this one so I don't know when that'll be up but thank you all for voting. I believe we beat last year's record which wasn't much but we beat it anyway so I've written down my game of the year awards on these little post-it notes so let's get straight into the awards shall we at number one. Well, the first award, I should say, the biggest surprise of 2013, uh, for me, was, and, and before everyone goes, oh, Kieran, you always forget to put a PC game. This is the second year I've had a PC game on my awards list, so shut up. Uh, Papers, Please, some crappy little indie game. That's amazing. It's on Steam for 10 bucks. You can play it on Mac, PC. Uh, it's like essentially like a 4-bit Border Patrol game. You know, it's amazing. It really is. It's fun. It's got its story mode. It's got an endless mode. Ten bucks. Go and download it. You can download the beta for free. Um, but just pay the extra ten, to pay the ten bucks on Steam. Get it. It's an amazing experience. It can run on any machine because look, if you look at it, you'll understand what I mean. But it's really fun. Essentially, you you work at a border border station, and it's your job to figure out if people can pass into your country or they have to go away. And as simple as that sounds, it's an amazing experience. And my biggest surprise of 2013. Uh, biggest disappointment. Assassin's Creed Black Flag, quite easily. I thought that they would at least make Assassin's Creed fun uh, compared to number three. They did not. Literally every mission involves tailing someone and then hiding. It's just boring. It's not fun. The story was boring. It didn't really pick up to the last part of the game. And even then it was boring. The modern day stuff was boring. Um, so, biggest disappointment, Assassin's Creed. It was, it was going to be Saints Row, but then I played Assassin's Creed, so Saints Row. Four, you're a close second with the disappointment. I don't know if that's something you want to be proud of, but being Saints Row, they probably will be very proud of that. Um, the best character, or the best character that you get to play as, um, I'm going to put Booker DeWitt from Bioshock, because I love the voice, I love Troy Baker. Um, I like the character, I like his motivations, I like the world, I like everything about it. I mean, all the other ones, like I love Joel from The Last of Us, um, but I, I liked Booker more. So... All you guys put Trevor, spoiler alert for that one, but no, I didn't really like any of the characters in Grand Theft Auto myself, but I did like the game, so let's see where it fits. But it definitely doesn't win the best multiplayer award, which is coincidentally the next award. I'm giving that, like, I really didn't want to give this award this year, but I know everyone wants to know what my favourite multiplayer game is. Um, all of them are pretty shitty, but the one that I play the most is Call of Duty, so I'm giving it to Call of Duty simply because I actually play it. Battlefield is absolutely unplayable in Xbox 360, it's fucking terrible. Assassin's Creed sucks, Grand Theft Auto sucks. Um, actually, no, I'm going to give it to Call of Duty Black Ops 2. So, Call of Duty Black Ops 2, you win this year. Or Ghosts. Whoever, you know, just fight it amongst yourselves. Unless there's another multiplayer game I've missed, I can't think of anyone, anyone that's good. Last of Us is boring. Multiplayer, I don't care about that. Uh, best voice acting goes to Last of Us. Uh, Joel, Troy Baker, and I can't remember who does Ellie, but she does an amazing job as well. Nolan North's in it. Heaps of people are in it. Amazing voice acting, it's great. Um, very immersive voice acting you get from Joel, because the husky southern voice, I want to say. Uh, immerses you in the world, it's great, great game, great experience, great voice acting, hence why I guess the best voice acting. I'm trying to go through these as quick as possible so we can get out of the meat, so I should shut up during the segues. Uh, segway, I should stop speaking. Sound, soundtrack, I just bit my fucking tongue. Um, best soundtrack, now I'm talking about orchestral original score soundtrack, not like the black rap music, or black metal, or black rap music in, in Grand Theft Auto, <laughs> um, don't like that. Uh, so the best soundtrack, I'm going to give it to Bioshock and or Assassin's Creed, I mean again you can fight over it, I mean, um, what's his name did Assassin's Creed, it was going to be Lorne Balfe but he didn't do it, it's pretty much Hans Zimmer's sidekick. Um, I can't remember the name of the bloke, Brian, Brian, Brian Tyler, Brian Tyler, he did Black Ops 2. Uh, no, he did the other Call of Duties. I can't remember. Anyway, he did a great job at Assassin's Creed, and I can't, I'm never going to remember his name, but whoever did um, uh, Bioshock did an amazing job as well. Battle for Columbia soundtrack's great. Songbird has a great song, um, or theme, or tune. So Bioshock and Assassin's Creed, I'm giving it split it and put it down the middle. Um, it's really hot in this fucking suit, but we're going to keep going. Uh, best downloadable game, The Wolf Among Us, even though they've only got one episode, completely shit on everything else that was downloadable this year. Everyone who's played it would know that. Uh, the worst game, now I've only played one on the list that I made, I only ever played one of them, which was Star Trek. I don't like Star Trek at all. Hated the game, was crap, the controls were crap, the whole game was crap, everything was crap. Um, right, now we're into game of the year. So the best of 2013, I put them in five, five, oh, 
Did you see that? I shouldn't have done that. Uh, five, you can't read my handwriting, so it's alright. So, the best of the... No, we're going backwards. Hang on, I'm so confused now. You've confused me. Uh, number five. A lot of people probably won't agree with this, but I love Batman. Batman was a great game. Batman Arkham Origins. I was thinking Splinter Cell, but I had a lot more fun with Batman. The problem with this year's Game of the Year, which was reversed to all the other years, normally it's very easy to pick five and four. Then it's hard to pick three, two, and one. This year was easy as fuck to pick three, two, and one, but hard as hell to pick four and five, because a lot of the games that were good were very, very mediocrely good. It wasn't a real standout, but I love Batman. I love Batman, as you know. Uh, Batman everything. I'm Batman Converse, for Christ's sake. Um, so Batman, good game. I can understand why people didn't like it that much, but it was just more of the same, and I really liked Arkham Asylum and Arkham City, so I have no problem with it. Uh, number four, Tomb Raider. Amazing game. Where is she? She's over here. Uh, Lara Croft, great job. I mean, there were some problems with the story early on, um, but it was just a great reboot. I love Uncharted which is based on Tomb Raider, so anything Uncharted-esque, I will love. Um, it doesn't deserve to be in the top three, but for a reboot and for, I believe, this studio's first game, it's quite amazing, and I'll probably end up picking up the high-definition expansion DLC pack for the Xbox One when I get that so I can replay it. But no, Tomb Raider is an excellent game. If you haven't go, got it, go and pick it up, because that's definitely the Dark Horse in the Game of the Year awards this year. It was nominated for a lot. Didn't win any, I don't think, but definitely deserves to be mentioned in the top five. Now... Now we get into the good part, number three. Now, when I say number three, you'll probably be able to guess very easily what number two and one is, and when I say what number two is, you'll be able to guess what number one is, because we all have great taste in video games. So number three, Call of Duty, no, Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto V, a great game. It had its problems, which is what's kept it from being number two and one, especially up against the two games that I picked for number two and one. Um, but great game. I just I just couldn't connect with the characters. I didn't really like the story that much. The world was kind of boring. Uh, the multiplayer was crap. But all apart, all amongst that, you know, great great game. Uh, the shooting was fun. The missions were fun. The cars were fun. It's just more Grand Theft Auto, which we all know and love. So number three goes to Grand Theft Auto Five. Great game. Uh, not looking forward to the expansion packs because apparently they focus more on Trevor, Michael, and Franklin. But what can you do? Uh, so number two, and as soon as I say this, you'll know what number one is. Uh, number two goes to The Last of Us. Amazing game from the people at Naughty Dog. Um, again, had its problems, which kept it from number one. I understand that it'll be a lot of people's number one because you were so immersed in it and, you know, amazed at the story and the gameplay. I wasn't a big fan of the gameplay, but that's not to say it's bad. There were parts I did think were bad, um, but I'm not going to spoil them because there are spoilers that I don't want to mention, so I'm not going to talk about this game that much. Um, but the story is amazing, the voice acting is amazing, the world's amazing, uh, everything is amazing about this game. Uh, the multiplayer I never played, I didn't, well I played two games, but I didn't like it. Um, but you shouldn't review a game like this on the multiplayer anyway. Um, but yeah, great, great, great game. Great ending, I thought. Uh, great production values, great everything. The only things to me that held it back were, um, I just had problem, issues with the controls, an issue with some of the gameplay elements that they had, but other than that it was really, it was more my taste than the game itself. So that's why at number one, a first person shooter from the great people, an Infinity Ward, Neversoft, Sledgehammer Games, whoever helped make Call of Duty Ghost. The story is so immersive. America has been you know, under attack. We've never seen that before, you know, in modern video games. This whole America's under attack and you have to rise from the bottom and take over and there will be, there will, no doubt there will be people that go, he just gave Call of Duty and then turn off the video. I had that happen last year when I did the exact same joke. So, fools to you, fool to you. Uh, but number one, Bioshock Infinite. Come on, the story in that game was fucking amazing. The gameplay was amazing. I didn't like the Vigors as much as I liked the, uh, the, the, oh god, the Plasmids in Bioshock. Um, but the story was amazing, the characters were amazing, voice acting, production values, looked great, played great, was great, was amazing. Um, it would probably be one of the few games that I would ever consider giving a 10 out of 10. Uh, and 10 out of 10 would probably, for me, Bioshock 1, Bioshock Infinite, so 2 out of 3 is not bad. Uh, Mass Effect 2, Fallout, uh, no, 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 hang on, I'm not giving it to Fallout. Um, but there, you know, there are a few other games I give a 10 out of 10, Bioshock Infinite is definitely one of them. Um, an amazing experience, amazing ending. I mean, the only problem is that when you have a game like Bioshock, you're expecting the big fucking twist ending, because it's happened in 1, 2, and now Infinite. Um, and System Shock and all that other kind of stuff. But, you know, you expect it. 
Uh, but was not expecting it to pan out the way that it did. A lot of people were bitching about it and overanalyzing it on Facebook and Twitter and social media. But just get over it. Just enjoy the game for what it is. The weapon's great. The story was great. Characters were great. Everything was great. I love Bioshock Infinite. That's why it's my number one game of this year. So go and pick it up. If, any, if you haven't picked up Bioshock Infinite yet, go and get it. If you haven't played Bioshock 1 and 2, you are an idiot and you don't deserve a modern video game console. You don't deserve games. You don't deserve anything. Go and get Bioshock 1. Go and get Bioshock 2, you can get a double pack, probably from Oz Game Shop. Go and get that. Um, so go and get it, pick it up, an amazing game. Play Bioshock Infinite, play Last of Us, play Grand Theft Auto, play Tomb Raider, and play Batman. Play Splinter Cell, play Dead Space. There are a lot of mediocre games that came out this year, but amongst, you know, Diamonds in the Rough are definitely the top three. You have The Last of Us, Bioshock, uh, and Grand Theft Auto in no particular order. Um, so go and pick up all those games, they're amazing. So until next time, ladies and gentlemen, what is your game of the year? We'll find out soon. Until next time, I'm out, right? Comment and subscribe. Au revoir.